Thick scaly patches on your limbs, hairline and maybe even trunk that don't go away no matter how diligently you moisturize? This might be psoriasis, an autoimmune disorder that affects the skin, but also many other organs and usually requires medical treatment. But what actually is psoriasis? Why is it dangerous? Can it be cured? Which skincare products are best to use to prevent flare-ups? And why is getting a tattoo when you have it a really bad idea? All that and more is answered in today's video. And if you have additional tips to share, please write them in the comments below. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well aging. Psoriasis is an autoimmune disease, meaning the body's own immune system attacks parts of the body. The reason for that is, like it is for most autoimmune diseases, not yet fully understood, but psoriasis often appears together with other autoimmune diseases like Crohn's disease. It is not contagious. What you see in people suffering from psoriasis are thick scaly patches often appearing on elbows, hairline, knees or other body parts. They are covered in flakes that can be white, silver or pink and are called plaques. These plaques can be anything from 1 to 10 centimeters in size and tend to come and go as psoriasis is a disease that is characterized by episodes of stronger and weaker inflammatory activity. Quite often they also affect the scalp and can lead to dandruff. There are different forms, with psoriasis vulgaris being the most common one. There is also psoriasis inversa that manifests in skin folds like the groin or underneath the breasts and typically has no flakes as the environment in the skin folds is too moist. Psoriasis capitis that only affects the scalp and hairline and psoriasis guttata. Psoriasis guttata most often manifests in children after a streptococcus infection and is named after the small droplet formed lesions that typically appear on the trunk. You can also divide psoriasis into an early onset form or psoriasis vulgaris type 1, which appears before you reach the age of 40. That one is usually the more severe form and late onset psoriasis or psoriasis vulgaris type 2, appearing after your 40th birthday, which is in general more mild. Now, the plaques look unsightly and can be itchy and sometimes painful, but unless they come in a massive flare-up that can compromise the skin barrier to an extent where electrolyte disorders can happen, aren't dangerous per se. Psoriasis goes deeper than what you see on the skin though, it also affects other organs, so it comes with a higher risk for the so-called metabolic syndrome, meaning the combination of elevated blood lipids, high blood pressure and diabetes, and as a result of these three, a higher risk for cardiovascular events like heart attack or stroke. Another thing it is associated with is psoriatic arthritis, an inflammation in the joints that is not only painful, but can if it goes untreated lead to disabling deformities. So, if you suspect you suffer from psoriasis, it is really important to see a doctor for confirmation and additional treatment, even if you decide the plugs don't bother you. Psoriasis is an autoimmune disease, meaning the body attacks its own structures. In the case of psoriasis, this means that so-called T-cells, cells of the immune system, migrate from the blood into the dermis and release their inflammatory mediators there, things like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukins. These stimulate the basal cells to turn over around eight times as fast as they usually do, so around every four days and not every 28, as it would be the norm, and also travel to the skin surface much quicker. That results in skin cells reaching the upper layer of the epidermis before they have undergone the full process of maturation, which leads to them not shedding like they should, and all that means that the epidermis is around 10 times thicker in affected areas than it normally is, so the skin feels thicker and that they scale instead of just shedding. On top of that, the inflammation leads to angioneogenesis, meaning new blood vessels growing into the affected area and the general redness and swelling you have with inflammation anywhere on the body. We know that, as it is with many autoimmune diseases, there's a genetic component. So if one or both of your parents suffer from psoriasis, you are more likely to develop it yourself. Once you develop psoriasis, there are seven major triggers that might give you a flare-up. As always, which one is the worst for you depends on the individual, so it is recommended to keep a journal to identify what you react most to. These seven triggers are stress, and yes, that includes the stress of having huge scaly plaques on your forehead and not knowing if your insurance covers this necessary medication. Streptococcus throat infection. Trauma to the skin, that includes sunburn, scratching, rubbing, cuts and tattoos or piercings. 
Weather changes, especially from warm and humid to cold and dry. Medication like beta blocker or lithium, for example. Alcohol. Smoking. You will often hear inflammatory diet mentioned as another trigger, but while a diet high in refined sugars and highly processed foods is never a good idea, several studies have shown that a diet specifically based around fish oils and other foods deemed anti-inflammatory doesn't have a strong effect and should be seen as part of a general preventative lifestyle changes rather than a cure. As it is very often your hormones affect the disease as well, with high estrogen levels often leading to remission and Drops in estrogen, like after ovulation, after giving birth, and in perimenopause and menopause, making the symptoms worse. Looking at the most common triggers, like trauma to the skin, it is easy to understand that the skincare used when you suffer from psoriasis should be one thing before everything else, and that is gentle. Whatever you do, avoid extra trauma to the skin, so stay clear from stripping cleansers, abrasive scrubs, or dry brushing. While plaques usually require topical prescription treatment and shouldn't be targeted with skincare alone, Things like shower oils instead of shower gels, rich fatty moisturizers preferable without fragrance and essential oils, and salicylic acid to gently get rid of the scales are recommended and should be used even when in remission. Your doctor might prescribe you topical steroids, calcineurin inhibitors, retinoids or creams with vitamin D analoga to treat the plaques, and supplement with systemic medication for more severe forms and to prevent arthritis or other organs being affected. In addition to topical treatment, there is bathing therapy where you soak in water with a high percentage of salt and different form of light therapy, with UVB radiation used often in combination with psoralene, a drug making the skin more sensitive to the sun. You might have seen that controversial video where Kim K promoted having a tanning bath and after backlash claimed she used it to help with her psoriasis, there is truth to that, as UV radiation is beneficial in flares. We know enough about the adverse effects of UV light though, namely melanoma, to use UV therapy only for a short time and very targeted on plaques and not regularly as preventative measure. Psoriasis is a chronic autoimmune disease, meaning it can't be cured. Once you are diagnosed with psoriasis, you will have to deal with this for the rest of your life. The good news is though that with medication and lifestyle adaptations, you can keep it under control. But even when you are in remission and your skin looks and acts normal, the changes are there, dormant under the surface, waiting for a trigger that will lead to a flare-up. To prevent flare-ups, you need to first and foremost avoid trauma to the skin. Avoid getting sunburned, wear loose-fitting clothes to avoid rubbing, don't scratch the skin, don't get a tattoo. I swear, I'm not against tattoos, it's just in this case they're really not a good idea. Try to incorporate relaxation techniques into your life to lower stress levels, maybe consider psychotherapy to help both the stress as well as the mental load that comes with living with a chronic disease. Exercise regularly, eat a balanced diet and try to keep a healthy weight as being obese can aggravate your flare-ups. And yes, just reading all that already stresses me out. On top of that, reduce your alcohol consumption as much as possible. None would be the goal and try to quit smoking, which is again a very hard thing to do, so if possible try to get help with that too. And please go see a doctor regularly for treatment and to prevent long-term damage to organs other than the skin. If there is anything you'd like to add, please do so in the comments below. I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram, blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon, bye!